Hi guys and welcome to this video on calculating the value of Pearson's correlation coefficient in brackets r, although there may not be an r. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Darren from mathsguru.com and uh, it's look, my aim to try and make maths as interesting, as engaging and as easy as I possibly can. If you found the video, that's good. Thanks very much for watching, unless the teacher's made you watch it. Um, can you do me the favor of just subscribing to my YouTube channel uh, or, or, and following me on TikTok? That would be greatly appreciated. Why? I'm never gonna be rich and I'm certainly never gonna be famous, but what I would like to know is that people out there are actually watching this stuff. I promise you, I won't spam you with lots of videos, but the content I put out there is meant to help as many kids as I can. So if you can also tell your mates, your friends, and your teachers that this content is there, I would be deeply, deeply grateful, seriously. The videos that I create and the notes that I'm about to write on all over can also be downloaded from askguru.com. Now, what are we learning in this lesson? Well, we've already learned that there is this magical value of R that talks about how close sort of points are from a scalar plot to some magical straight line. And we'll talk about that magical straight line a little bit later on. To be able to work out the value of R, there are two ways. We can use a formula or we can use our CAS. Which one do you think we are going to want to do? Well, it's the general maths course. The last lesson we looked at what the actual value of R was and how we could use this awesome table here, which should be in your summary book, to then translate or interpret that value of R. And so an R value between 0.75 and 0.99 would say that we would suggest that those points are a strong positive linear association but the data we're using for must be two numerical values and it must be linear for me able to make sense of the value of r it doesn't make sense otherwise you can actually have a curve line your calculator or the formula will still give you a value of r but it's relatively meaningless now i don't know who this pearson guy is but when he did this he was like oh i like formulas and so he came up with possibly the most disgusting looking formula on the planet now, when I taught my boys this uh, a short while ago, I actually really wanted to make them do the table. It would have been about 16 columns long, calculations going up the roof, and all this for one value of R. Luckily, for general maths, you don't have to do that. So although that formula there looks very exciting for the Pearson's correlation coefficient, I'm not gonna make you do it by hand. What we're gonna do is use our CAS. Now, I'm gonna do a bit of a follow along, if you will. Um, to show you how I can use my calculator to do this. You've already practiced in a previous video and hopefully with your teacher or whoever you're doing this with, uh, the idea of how to put this data into your calculator. Putting it in, really, really important. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna bring up my calculator and as it says here, I'm gonna hit menu. Now I am using the TI Inspire at the moment in my current school. I know the ClassPad is another really good calculator. If you're a ClassPad user, the instructions are fairly similar. You're just gonna put your stuff in a list. So what I'm gonna do is go menu, and I'm gonna do list and spreadsheet. Now I know, because I've said over and 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 over again, that I really must put my uh, headings on my table first. If you don't, sadly it can stuff up a bit, bit later on, but I'm gonna put income there, and then I'm gonna put CO2 there. And is it gonna let me? It does, that's very kind of you, thank you very much. Now, I'm not gonna let you watch me put all the values in, but I'm about to put all the values in. All right, so there we go. I've just put in my first column's worth of values. And the first thing I always check is that I've got the right number of data items in there. So I seemingly have 11. You can see that there because it's in row 11. When I check my data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, good. As I scroll back up, what I'm doing is just checking that it makes sense the numbers i've put in make sense if you've done the wrong number or you've missed one it becomes clear sadly when you miss numbers here it stuffs things up massively right so what i'm going to do now is put my co2 in and again having put my values in i'm just going to scroll up and have a quick look to make sure it makes sense there we go so that certainly is one way of doing it now there are lots of ways of finding the value of r but this is the best way that i can think of at this moment in time i'm going to move my uh, calculator or that little line to over there and I'm now going to go menu I'm going to go statistics I'm going to go statistics calculations try that one again I'm going to go menu I'm going to go statistics statistics uh, calculations and then I'm going to go basically two variable statistics because I've got my income and I got my co2 now this is the most important part of this making sure you get your EV and RV the right way around. Now, as it appears, 
the more money I spend or the more income a company has, country has, then probably the more CO2. So I'm imagining income goes here and CO2. So what I do is click on here, I select income, I go to there and click CO2, and the rest of it I just leave as is. And you'll notice there is lots and lots of information provided on this table, but if I scroll down, what do I see here? At the very bottom, I have an R value. So my R value there is 0 0.818344. I'm gonna to want to round that to a particular number of decimal places. The question will tell you, but in this situation, I'm gonna round that to four, four decimal places, so 0 0.8183. So I'm gonna write here 0 0.8183 is my value of R. Now again, what I wanna do is just plot these things to make sure that my value of R is correct. And if I wanted to plot them, I go control plus data and statistics. I'm gonna put that on the bottom and go income and CO2. And what I notice is yes, these points are sloping up. And so I do have a positive R value. Now, is there any way of getting that R value from here? Not so much, I can get an R squared, but I'm gonna leave that for another lesson. So having done that, let's have a look. And as I say here, I have the calculator's instructions for you that you can download from mathsguru.com. So again, what did I do? I uh, brought up my menu, I added a list and spreadsheet, I put on my income and CO2, and then I basic selected stats calculations. Now in this situation, you'll notice that I can, uh, did linear regression A plus BX. Now, I'll show you what that actually does. If I go back to my calculator, I bring my calculator back up. Now, if I go back to my screen here, and I'm gonna go across, and I'm gonna go up all the way to the top again, to G, and I'm gonna go Menu, Statistics, Stat Calculations, Linear Regression A plus BX. Exactly the same idea, what was on my X list? My income, what was on my Y list? My CO2, hit OK. And again, you'll notice there's lots of information being added, all right? It's for some reason put it in row uh, column H. But again, if I look down here, you'll notice I don't have to scroll so far before I get the same value of R. Now, later on in videos, these A, B, and R squares become really important as well. But the great thing about the calculator is there's lots of ways of doing it, yes? Yeah? So the notes I've downloaded there are absolutely, or done there, will absolutely work, but there are other ways as well. And as you can see, when you have that information, you are looking at getting the value of R. Now, once you've got that value of R, you would then be asked to interpret it by going back to the table. But I think you've pretty much got everything you need there. Two ways, in fact, of finding R from your calculator, and there are other ways of doing it as well. But I'll leave that for now. Hopefully it's been useful. If it has, tell your mates, your teachers, subscribe on YouTube, follow me on TikTok. Goodness gracious, that's a long list. Um, but more importantly, come back. All right. Hopefully I'll see you for another video. Take care, guys. See you again soon. Bye bye.